Hey everyone, and welcome back for another edition of the Money Pros. I'm Oliver Tutt, certified financial planner practitioner, your host for the next. half hours we talk about the issues related to your money how to make it how to keep it in hopefully how to help it grow it's the start of a new year so we thought everyone and welcome back for another edition of the Money Pros. I'm Oliver Tutt, certified financial planner practitioner, your host for the next half hour as we talk about the issues related to your money, how to make it, how to keep it, and hopefully how to help it grow. It's the start of a new year, so we thought this would be a great opportunity to take a look back at investment markets in 2013 and look forward to what might be in store for us in 2014. To help us with the bond market will be Matthew Dalton, CEO and managing partner of Bellhaven Investments in White Plains, New York. But up first, let's talk stocks. Joining me now is our financial planning and investing pro, Rob Auclair, certified financial planner practitioner with Randall Financial Group in Providence. Rob, welcome back to the show. Thanks, we better Oliver. talk about the uh, stock market investments and our financial planning pro. Appreciate that. So uh, the stock market, as anybody that's even a casual follower probably knows, is it was a historically good year for stocks in general. We're going to dig into the details of what did particularly yeah. well versus other things in a little bit. But generally speaking, what were the you know, economic, political, other factors that you saw that really drove market performance in 2013? Well, I mean, there are some particular ones, but I think in general we had a lot of momentum in the positive growth areas. Um, and so you know, a lot of the indicators um, and you know, the market reports and everything all seemed to trend towards being positive. And two of the ones I think a lot of people looked at were you know, housing sales, new housing sales were definitely up and you know unemployment coming down and so you know throughout the year it may not have been big jumps but if we looked at a full year you know come came down about almost a full percentage point um, what i look at though is kind of the momentum people actually got two thousand and eight i think far enough behind them now that they saw some positive news with a lot of stuff going on and now they finally said okay we've had five positive years of a stock market and really kind of jumped back in um, you know the people that were kind of hanging out there with some cash. So I know there's still some other money there, but I think it was really that momentum, the confidence of the investor. So although it might not feel like it on Main Street <clears throat> for a lot of people, what you're saying is a couple of the key economic indicators, unemployment and housing sales actually got better in 2013. Right, I mean, you didn't see enormous jumps, but I think there were a lot of indicators beyond those two that all kind of pushed in the right direction and that kind of helped the sentiment for people to invest. And the stock market loves good news. Uh, always. So let's get right to it. How good of a year was it in the stock market in 2013? Very good. I mean, the two major indicators, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is everybody hears about, indicative right. of you know 30 large cap companies, you know, returned just under 30 percent, and S&P 500 
you know, that's the 500 large cap companies returned almost, I think it was just over 32%. So, you know, right around that 30% return, you know, just a great year for the market. And what I would say is, you know, it's really a, a great piece to look at of how resilient the market is. You know, if we go back to how people felt in 08, they wouldn't have predicted in four and five years we would have had those positive returns that come out. So I think it's a good lesson. Sure, in 08 when the markets were down that much and more, and now we see a market <clears throat> yeah. uh, where I mean, where are we much. now? And it's, you know, taking that snapshot of not focusing on this little time frame, but the big time frame. And if I'm not mistaken, S&P 500, best year since 1997? 96. 96. 97. So really, historically, I mean, almost a, uh, in, you know, if you look at a decade, uh, one of the best years yes. you're likely to see. Now. The S&P and the Dow measure, you know, we talk about that as a measure of the stock market, but really that's pretty specific to large industrial stocks, right? There yes. are a lot of other uh, pieces of the stock market. What are some of the other areas, segments of the stock market, and how did their performance compare yeah. to the S&P 500? So I always talk about asset allocation, and I think what we need to know is S&P 500 is just going to be a small portion of what someone has in their in As their part portfolio. of their stock portfolio. I think um, we got a slide, yeah, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yep. So if you take a look at the slide here on the graph, you know, you can kind of measured up versus the S&P 500. We've got, you know, mid caps, which returned right around 32%. So just a little bit better than the S&P 500 for mid cap stocks. And these are still stocks that companies that folks probably would heard of. We're talking about, you know, $5 billion to $10 billion right, market cap stocks, but still smaller than the largest S&P 500 yeah. companies. And then small caps, somewhere between the 5 and the $3 billion mark, you know. So those still big companies, really well. not mom and pop grocery store we're talking about Correct. here. But it's, 41% okay. in that area. So s small cap stocks, that really, people really made some money in small cap, more aggressive, growth oriented companies did even better than the big companies, right? right. And then we look okay. at, you know, international in general did really well, 20%, maybe not as good as some of these other sectors. But I think, you know, international, there's been some stabilization in Europe there, and I think that's kind of lend its hand to, again, getting some continuity and feeling, you know, pretty good about that. So that's the developed <clears throat> markets, England, yeah. Germany, France, places like yeah. that, right, Eurozone yeah. uh, countries. But it wasn't all good news, yeah. right? Emerging markets were down, you know, just shy of minus 3%. Um, and in that area, you know, you know, a big piece of it is China, and China's, you know, growth has really slowed over the last few years, and they're a big part of that emerging market. But emerging markets for the last few years really hasn't done, you know, great. And I think that's a great story to talk about with respect to asset allocation, because emerging markets, we've seen years where that sector is up 50 plus percent. Right. Here we have a year where it's actually in the negative when stocks are doing well. So the inverse relationship. Not there. all stocks yeah. do the same thing, right? When we're talking about the stock market. Now, if we were to dig a little deeper, and we've been talking about asset classes, and I think you and I both agree those are the most important things to look at. But are there particular industries that did better than others? If you look at certain sectors of the market, right. um, how did different industries stack up? Yep. I think we have another slide to talk about that. Right, so, you know, consumer discretionary, you know, that led the way at 43%. Walmart, Target, places like that. Uh, yeah, that and, I mean, usually those are goods that, you know, in good times, they tend to do very well. Appliances. They're things that we don't really need yep. um, all the time. And then healthcare came in at 41%, biotech had a really good year there. And then you can kind of see the rest all, you know, double digit results. But this was the first year, and I believe it was since 1997, that all 10 major sectors in the S&P 500 had 10% return or better. So that shows us that it's not just you know a certain area not of the S&P. Not just tech stocks or it's something like that. It's across the board um, that it did that. So I mean, that's been 16, 17 years of you know, just a really good market overall. And how did the rest of the world fare when we look at uh, <clears throat> different countries and things like that? Well, you know, we looked at international doing over 20% emerging markets, lost a little bit there. But, you know, um, if we look specifically, Japan led the way and with the Nikkei are returning over 50%. Um, and, you know, what it's been said is, you know, that the new government in there has kind of restructured the monetary policy They've there. been in a recession, essentially, yeah. for 20 years. So to see that kind of performance in Japan is pretty significant. Right. Um, and then in Europe, if you look at the DAX, which is, you know, the German index in a sense there, over 20% in that category. Um, so, you know, those two areas, along with the rest of the world, I mean, you're seeing positive returns in a lot of areas. All right, I'm going to hold you there, but it's a hell of a year in the stock market. For more information on equity markets or for a copy of Randall Financial Group's 2013 market commentary, please visit our website at foxprovidence.com slash themoneypros, where you can also view a replay of this segment. Joining us up next on The Money Pros is Matt Dalton. He's CEO and managing partner of Bellhaven Investments. He's here to help us with the uh, rundown of the bond market in 2013. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned. There's more to come right here on The Money Pros. Pros, on this first show of 2014, we're taking a look back at what happened in investment markets over the last 12 months. With me now is Matt Dalton. He's CEO and managing partner of Bellhaven Investments, a municipal bond manager in White Plains, New York. 
Matt, thanks for being on the show with us. Thanks for having me back. You were on our very first show, right? Yes. So this is a little bit of Money Pros nostalgia, so it's great That's to have you. You okay. guys manage $1.8 billion in municipal bonds, so you certainly know what you're talking about when it comes to the bond market. We just heard about how the stock market did uh, in 2013. It was really a fantastic year for most equity categories. How did the bond market do in comparison? Bond market had a rough year, but not uh, as rough as it had in 2008. Uh, for the most part, uh, depending on the asset class you were working with, you saw negative returns of anywhere from 8% uh, eight, eight to flat for the year. Some areas you were slightly positive, but uh, it, it was a rough year. What were the, just in general, the headline kind of factors that, that caused the bond market to have a flat to down year versus the equity markets, which were driven by economic recovery and had a, actually a very good year? Well, the, the Fed has, has been uh, a big component of it. The taper has been uh, the focus. Uh, the Fed is uh, likely to be done tapering by October of this year. Uh, when they announced that they were going to taper that uh, bombshell the uh, bond market and you saw interest rates rise uh, the 10-year treasury bond uh, touched a low of a 160 today it yields a 288 it's been as high as about a 3 a 305 here recently so I, I think that's important for our viewers to understand is because a lot of them may not be all that familiar with what the Federal Reserve is doing in the open market but their activities have really, uh, over the past several years, up until 2013, mm -hmm. have resulted in really driving interest rates down. And they've seen that on the credit card rates, they've seen that in their mortgage rates, uh, if they refinanced or if they have floating rate mortgages, things like that. So those falling interest rates were actually really good for bonds over the past several years, right? And now that when you're talking about the taper, what you're saying is that the Fed is pulling back on those open market activities? And so interest rates are going up, and that's what's causing bond prices to go down. Do I have that right? That's correct. Okay. When uh, uh, interest rates rise, the value of your bond goes down. So fixed income investors really need to keep that inverse relationship between interest rates and, and bond values in mind. Correct. Are there particular sectors of the bond market that did better or worse than others? I mean, just like the stock market that has a lot of different categories, mm -hmm. the bond market is equally diverse. We've got to dig down a little deeper rather than just talking about bonds in general. How did various sectors of the market do? Well, uh, I call it the bookends. Uh, the municipal bond market took both sides of it. Uh, uh, muni, bond, uh, muni bonds were up slightly for the year. Um, in most cases, uh, they might have been flat or down, but you, you can find uh, some sunshine there. Uh, the worst performing sector in the bond market was taxable municipal bonds. Okay. Uh, the sequester had uh, a fair amount to do with that. Um, some of the Build America bonds that were issued uh, uh, after the 2008 debacle to get stimulus going and, and uh, allow municipalities to borrow money uh, had a, a call feature that if uh, they didn't get the uh, reimbursement from the government that they were promised, they had the right to call. And that uh, blew a pretty cold wind through the taxable municipal bond market. Okay. So munis had both sides of the spectrum. And in the tax free is good, the taxable is <laughs> yeah. bad, and then in between Exactly. Was... In between you had everything else. Okay. Corporate bonds, treasuries, mortgage-backed securities uh, agencies. Uh, uh, they all were in the middle of that all negative for the year. Do you find yourself having to remind people though that a bad year in the bond market is not the same thing as a bad year in the stock market? I mean you talked about categories down 8 percent and that's a pretty lousy yeah. performance for bonds but that could be just another drop in the bucket when it comes to stock market performance. Do you have to remind people of that? You do. Uh, I think people forget that uh, a, a bond is just cash flows. You are purchasing future cash flows. Right. That you, you know when you're going to get paid, you know when they're going to mature. Uh, when you're dealing with an individual security. A little different when you're in a mutual fund. Uh, it doesn't have a maturity, it's more perpetual, but uh, you are going to get the income. It's a paper loss. You have to remind people that. They, they see a drop in the value of their bond portfolio and they lose sight of what the intent was in the first place, which was this is a safer area. Enjoy the interest that you're earning 
you will have. Don't forget, for you have those cash flows that you're going to get regardless right. of what interest That's rates right. do and things like that. All right, for more information on the bond market in 2013, visit our website at foxprovidence.com. Click on the Money Pros. Next up on our financial roundtable, I'll be joined by both of our guests as we continue our review of investment markets in 2013. We'll also take a look forward to what we might expect this year. All that and more when we return right here on the Money Pros. It's in 2013 and I look forward to what might be in store for investors this year, 2014. With me are Rob Claire, Certified Financial Planner Practitioner with Randall Financial Group, and Matt Dalton, he's CEO and Managing Partner of Bellhaven Investments and a bond specialist. Thank you both for being with me once again. Um, let's jump right into it. Matt, given the underperformance in bonds, we talked about that in your, in, uh, your last segment. Does that mean that investors should be saying, you know, bonds didn't do well, I'm going to reduce my, my bond holdings because they didn't give me the same satisfaction that my stock holdings did and rotate into stocks? Or conversely, should they be looking to reload on bonds uh, now that things might be cheaper? What's your take on that? How, what's the strategy investors should be looking at, uh, do you think? What we see uh, smart money do, Oliver, is you're, you're always... Uh, allocating to different asset classes. You want to be diversified. And when you have a drop in one asset class, there's a reason to allocate more funds to that so that your overall picture is balanced mm -hmm. the way that you set out to balance it. So uh, as you've heard Warren Buffett say for many, many years, uh, buy when people are selling. So if, you, if you've seen your 80-20 uh, stock to bond mix, go to 90-10 because mm -hmm. of stock outperformance and bond underperformance. Mm -hmm. Now's not the time to then take it to 95-5. You want to get back to the 80-10. Right. So you really, you should potentially be looking at buying bonds in this That's opportunity, correct. right? That's correct. Rob, I want to ask you the exact same question, and I think I'm a little more fearful here of what individual investors might do. We just talked about some of the spectacular returns, small caps up 40%, uh, other categories up in yeah. the 30s domestically. Is now the time? Maybe I've been out of the market since 2008 when I got my head handed to me. Do I take my uh, retirement fund that's been riding in cash for the past five years and go all in since it's looking good now? What do you think? Well, from my perspective, it's still a time frame thing. And so whether we're looking at what happened this past year or reverse, you know, two or three years ago, if it's long term, we can't time this market. Nobody knows how high it's going to go. Nobody knows how low it's going to go. So the idea of, well, let me just wait, let me wait, let me wait, is really going to get you nowhere. So I think the idea of putting your money to work, have a well-balanced portfolio that's going to be reflective of your risk in your time frame is still the most important thing. I mean, people kind of look at that as a boring answer, but I think it's the right answer of having a well-balanced portfolio that's accurate to your time frame. And getting that money in makes some sense. So, you know, investors, I think they're worried that, you know, gee, it went up, so I might jump in with both feet. Or conversely, it went up, so I missed my opportunity. What you're saying is it's not a timing decision. It's about your long-term financial planning strategy. If some of your money belongs in the market, it belongs in the market as much now as it did five years ago. Correct. Well, let's hope that people uh, <laughs> actually buy into it. Now, we have to give our <clears throat> typical investing uh, disclaimer here as we look forward to, uh, you know, here we're sitting in January, we've got a whole 2014 uh, ahead of us, that nobody has a crystal ball. We're not in the business of trying to predict what's going to happen in the markets. But what I'd like to ask you guys, uh, and Matt, I'm going to start with you, is what do you think the potential drivers are for markets, bond markets in particular in 2014, whether it be political, economic, or otherwise? Uh, the drivers in 2014 are going to be uh, the economy. The Fed is looking for some inflation. Inflation is the Achilles heel to fixed income. Um, there'll be a heavy focus on where is the economy? Is it improving? Can they continue to taper? Um, that, that'll be the focus. And, and as we were reminded on Friday, uh, we can have bad numbers and interest rates can drop. So uh, we're clearly not out of the woods yet. The Fed would like to get the stimulus uh, program shut off and see how we do. Inflation, it's interesting you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Inflation's been remarkably under control with this low interest rate environment. Mm -hmm. What would the Fed do if they started to see inflation creep back into the system? Uh, after they throw their party, uh, <laughs> I think uh, they'll, they'll let inflation run uh, a, a little hot for a while. Um, they want to make sure that this economy is back and that we're, we're off to the races. And at some point down the road, 
uh, they may start to, uh, to tighten. All right, so something definitely to take a look at. Now, Rob, I'm going to ask you the same question without whipping out your crystal ball here. What, um, what do you think are going to be the things that move the markets? We'll talk equity markets in particular mm -hmm. in 2014. We don't know if it's good, going to be good. We don't know if it's going to be bad. But, you know, what do you think the news headlines are going to be? Potentially? Uh, well, unfortunately, I think it is media driven rather than maybe even fundamental analysis. But a lot of the information, in the short term, right? right yeah. A lot of the information that I think we'll get during the year, you know, the indicators and the reports that come out, the way they trend and the timing of how they trend, I think, is going to be really important. Um, you know, the debt ceiling when they vote on that in February, is that going to be positive or negative news? And how are people going to, you know, react to that? We talk about, you know, the Fed, the Fed, had, you know, there's some new leadership there, too. You know, how do they spin that? So I think there's a lot of things, you know, economically and government-wise, but I think it's all the timing of where the market is at those points in times, and are we getting some continuity of still good news? I think that's what the investor will follow. So we've got about a minute and a half left. We know that there's going to be uh, volatility in the system, good or bad year. That's going to happen. Let me ask you, and Matt, I'm going to ask you as well, what can investors do to manage that short-term risk? in their portfolios, if anything. Well, from my perspective, I mean, I could give you a long-winded answer, but I really think people need to look at rebalancing like they do every year. I mean, right now we're looking at, let's say someone had a 60-40 equities to bond split. You know, right now that could be 70 or 80 to 20. Um, rebalancing that and just getting back to where you should be is something that's so simple. Do it. Reduce your risk and still have that long-term vision of what you're trying it's to do. mechanical. Achieve. You don't need any foresight <clears throat> and right. just get back to that 60-40 if you're up to a 70-30 or something like that. Now, what are your thoughts? You know, volatility, uh, when you hear that word, you want to think uh, negative. Invite the volatility. It can be a positive as much as it is a negative. So, uh, again, timing the markets is a tough thing to do. Nobody can get that right 100% of the time. Stay invested. Add to it. Rebalance whatever it is that you and your advisor are working on to meet your goals invite that volatility embrace the volatility yeah, embrace i think volatility. i might get bumper stickers for that because lord knows we've seen a lot of volatility over the past several years all right i'm going to hold it there for more details on market performance in 2013 and what to do in 2014 visit our website foxprovidence.com where you can also view a replay of this segment up next each of our guests will give us their single best investment tip for 2014 so stay with us there's still more to come right here on the money pros and a look ahead to 2014. With about a minute left, I want to give each of my guests a final opportunity to give us their single best piece of investment advice for 2014. So I got to remember to write that on my checks too. <laughs> Rob, you know, if you told them one thing for 2014, what would it be? Don't jump ship, don't run to the next best thing, and don't get rid of the things that aren't good. Um, you know, I didn't say that, I think, in the earlier segment, but I think a lot of people sometimes do that. They run away from something that's, you know, done really good and get into something that maybe did really bad. I think it's really taken a balanced approach again. Use fundamentals, don't follow everything the media says, try to take your emotion out of it. Steady as she goes, really. I mean, don't let 2013 affect what you do in 14. It should be the same plan all the time. Matt, what do you think? Uh, I agree with Rob in the sense that, uh, you know, we talked about embracing the volatility. Embrace the fear, uh, rebalance your portfolio, uh, muni bonds are very, very attractive right now. You, they've had a tough year. Uh, the default concerns in Detroit have caused problems for this market. Mutual funds have seen withdrawals for 32 weeks out of mutual funds, fixed income mutual funds. So there are some opportunities there. Closed in funds would be an area that I would look uh, to find some value right now. They're trading at extreme discounts to their net asset value. You know, I think that's great advice, and you mentioned the word fear, and the flip side of fear is mm -hmm. greed, but controlling your emotions is, I think, the hardest thing you can do in investing. And when you have a year like 2013 was, it's very easy to let your fear and your emotion, uh, your fear and your greed emotions take over. So we're going to hold it there, gentlemen. Thanks very much. That's it for today's show. If you've got a question for our money pros, visit our website at foxprovidence.com or find us on Facebook. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll join us again next time right here on The Money Pros.